the Lake Lario area has been known for the beauty of its landscape since ancient times. The deep blue waters of the Lario, the imposing mountains which slope down into it, forming a continuous line of inlets and promontories, the mildness of the climate, the clusters of narrow houses around slender bell towers, the alleys that wind down to silent docks, the magnificent villas surrounded by age-old parks, the cypress trees grouped around little isolated churches, the olive-growing terraced fields. These are the typical features of the Como province landscape. The capital of the province, Como, is a town of austere beauty, a legacy of its over 2,000 years of age. In fact, it was founded in 59 BC under the patronage of Caesar. Its walls and towers from the age of the communes and the road network of the Roman castrum are the symbol and outpost of all the cultural and artistic features of Lombardy. On one side, it is overlooked by the Baradello Hill, on which stands the tower of the same name, built in 1156 by Barbarossa, who at that time was interested in the fortification of Como, his faithful ally in the battle against Milan. The most striking view, however, is that which can be enjoyed by taking the cable car up to Brunate at 715 meters high. This is a famous tourist resort and the destination of those international visitors who wish to enjoy the beauty of these places to the full. At the end of the lakeside promenade rises the monument to the European resistance in memory of the victims of the Second World War. Further ahead, in the greenest and quietest area of the town fabric, and mirrored in the lake, is the Voltian Temple, erected in 1927 on the occasion of the first centenary of the death of Alessandro Volta. Following the shoreline, we come to the war memorial to Como's First World War victims. This is the work of Terragni and is built from heavy blocks of carcel stone in memory of the places where the fighting took place. The lakeside walk continues towards Villa Olmo. This large villa takes its name from an old elm tree, which, according to legend, has existed since the times of Pliny the Elder. Today, the villa, which is surrounded by a large public park, belongs to the local council and is often used to host exhibitions, congresses and meetings. It is the overall harmony that can be admired in the architecture of the cathedral which is so striking. Although it incorporates several Renaissance elements, the façade is typically Gothic. Its sculptural decorations, which are mainly the work of Giovanni Rodari and his sons, are extraordinary. Next to the cathedral is the Broletto, built at the beginning of the 13th century by the governor Bonando da Codazzo. With its layers of white, grey and red marble, it makes the square the heart of medieval prestige in the Como province. The San Fadeli Square also retains a medieval flavour. It is one of the most atmospheric and best preserved architectural environments and up until the 19th century, it was the marketplace and commercial centre of the town. Outside the medieval town wall is the church of Sant'Ambondio, which is the oldest example of the civic Romanesque style. Back in the historical town centre, a visit to the civic museums housed in the Giovio and Olginati buildings is a must. 
These are the Paolo Giovio Archaeological Civic Museum and the Giuseppe Garibaldi Renaissance Museum. When it begins to get dark, the views from Coma are of a clear, intense beauty. Lake Como, or Lario, which was formed during the Quaternary in the gully hollowed out by the Ada Glacier, has the shape of an upturned Y, with a main branch, which forks into two at the level of Bellagio Point, forming the Como branch to the southwest and the Lecco branch to the southeast. Let's start by going up Lake Lario on the Como side. An ideal place to start from is Cernobio, on the edge of which is Villa Erba. Thanks to the construction of extensive pavilions and a modern congress centre, this extensive complex, which is surrounded by a magnificent park, has been relaunched as a major civic centre for trade fairs and exhibitions. A short walk from the jetty, the visitor can reach Chernobyl's little square. Along the shore, there is a succession of hotels, bars and restaurants, a tourist spot which boasts ancient traditions. Further on, the outline of Villa d'Este, the most famous of Chernobyl's villas, can be seen from the lake. It dates back to the second half of the 16th century and became a luxury hotel in 1873. There are many other magnificent villas, but it is only from the lake that the startling beauty of the internal gardens. The big Hollywood and rock stars have been unable to resist the charm of these places and have made Lake Como their quiet hideaway or their favorite holiday destination. The only island in Lake Lario is Comachina Island. This stretch of the lake, which has the loveliest landscape, continues towards Lenno, after passing the ancient village of Roman origin known as Osuccio. Near this village is the sanctuary of the Madonna del Soccorso. Back on the lake, we come to the magnificent Balbianello Point, a wooded triangle which juts out into the lake and on the point of which is the villa of the same name, chosen by the film director George Lucas as the setting for the second episode of the Star Wars saga. The Bellagio promontory evoked indelible memories in the hearts of immortal writers such as Stendhal and Flaubert. Today, Bellagio has retained and maintained its elegance, both architecturally and in its town planning, while adding the organization of modern tourism. Leaving the pearl of Lake Lario and its splendid villas behind, we come back towards the part of the lake known as the Tremezzina. In this stretch of the lake, the 17th century jewel of Villa Carlotta is particularly striking. In spring, its gardens offer a dazzling display of flowering rhododendrons and azaleas. And apart from being a favorite destination with nature lovers, it also attracts cultural enthusiasts who come to visit the museum housed inside the rooms of the historical home. The place at the widest point of the lake is Cadenabia. Its large international hotels, which started to appear in the first half of the 19th century, are testimony to the tourist vocation of the area. Mm -hmm. 
Menajo is an ancient market centre whose fortunes and development have been due to its crucial position at the mouth of the valley of the same name, which connects Lake Lario to the River Ceresio. Just as atmospheric is the rocky promontory on which stands Rettonico, a small hamlet of the San Siro district, dominated by the mass of a 14th century castle. Continuing northwards, we come to other tourist and cultural centres, such as Dongo and Gravedona. Beyond Sorico, between the mouths of the Mera and the Ada, there is a protected natural park area, known as the Spanish Plain. The short valley which goes from Menaggio to Porlezza climbs steeply in the first part of the ascent from the Lario shore, but then flattens out towards the River Ceresio. There are also other smaller lakes in the Como province, like Lake Segrino, Lake Cusiano, Lake Alserio, and Lake Montorfano. An equally attractive itinerary is that which ideally takes us from Erba, up the Valassina, and then down towards Bellagio by way of Monte San Primo, which is the panoramic viewpoint that overlooks Bellagio and the two branches of the lake which join together. An ideal excursion takes us to the Intelvi Valley, a small valley between Lake Como and Lake Lugano. From here, you can enjoy a breathtaking view, which takes in Lake Como, Lake Lugano, the whole of the northeastern Alps, and the mountains of the Ligurian Apennines. Our journey across the thousand reflections of the lake and the province of Como comes to an end on the shores of the enchanting Lake Piano. <laughs>